It can't be seen. It can't be felt until it's too late. It's lethal in high doses, but it's all around us. Radiation is one of the most horrifying monsters that actually exist. It is entropy made manifest, literal instability, burning the hand or slowly destroying the body from inside. This might remind you of a question that seals the fate of responding firefighters in the series Chernobyl. You taste metal. Yeah, what is that? Noel Carroll writes, Monsters are identified as impure and unclean. They are putrid or moldering things, or they hail from oozing places, or they are made of dead or rotting flesh, or chemical waste, or are associated with vermin, disease, or crawling things. They are not only quite dangerous, but they also make one's skin creep. Radiation is that monster which turns humans into Carol's slimy, moldering nightmare. It is the ultimate uncleanliness, and the fact that it's invisible is enough to make one's skin crawl. There is so much creative speculation out there about the long-term effects of radiation on human or animal life that mutants or zombies don't even seem that far-fetched anymore. If radiation is the monster, that would make nuclear fission the mad scientist. <laughs> That explosion at a nuclear plant in the Soviet Union. The radiation levels at the site boundary. We have a tendency to focus on the danger of radiation because of the catastrophes, controlled or otherwise, throughout the mid to late 20th century. It's perfect fodder for drama because when it's bad, it's <laughs> really bad. But the same goes for the good. For a while there, nuclear energy was the future. Our nuclear families would drive nuclear-powered cars, and all the electricity in our homes would come from nuclear power plants. It's an ideal in terms of energy density, volume of fuel, CO2 emissions, and waste, which is very little in comparison to fossil fuels. The energy that we can harvest from the reaction is immense. However, we can't have fission without radiation, and that monster is trying to escape our methods of containment. As such, the dangers are perceived to be much greater than fossil fuels. So the question is, will we be able to take a step back and look at nuclear energy with cold, measured rationality? Or do we want to hold on to Carol's notion of the monster? After all, it's awfully alluring, isn't it? The dream of the nuclear-powered future didn't take very long to wear off. Bombs aside, the three big disasters did nothing to comfort the public. There's just three, but the reactions by governments and technicians and the fallout from them has been more frightening from a media perspective than the bombs dropped in 1945 and all the nuclear warheads that have been exploded in our atmosphere for testing purposes. In 1979, a partial meltdown occurred on Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania due to electrical and mechanical failures and was exacerbated by human error. The horrifying part of this story is that there could have been an explosion due to a hydrogen buildup in the containment unit. This is the biggest nuclear disaster to happen because of the U.S. inside the U.S. But an even bigger contributing factor to radiophobia was the media response. It was the first step in a nuclear nightmare. For despite no explosion occurring, radiation still leaked from the reactor and the public was exposed without their knowledge. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union, and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. There has been an accident at the Chernobyl Atomic Power Station. One of the atomic reactors was damaged. Perhaps the worst accident in the short history of the world's nuclear power industry. It would be less than 10 years until the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. Governmental incompetence aside, Chernobyl has taken on a mythic form in the cultural perception, because the story, and even the Wikipedia article, is absolutely riveting. Chernobyl in particular has spawned a rich heritage of fiction, particularly the concept of the zone, a magical and mysterious place where the laws of physics do not apply and mutants run rampant. Well, this could be a Chernobyl in the making. We are now going into uncharted territory. We are thinking the unthinkable. Another accident wouldn't occur for almost 30 years. Fukushima, 10 years ago, is characterized by its extremely competent response on the part of the Japanese government, but also as being one of the worst nuclear disasters. 
However, it was the result of a massive earthquake, the fourth strongest ever recorded and the strongest recorded in Japan, and an ensuing 14-meter tsunami that devastated the power plant, causing a cooling system failure, which led to the meltdown of three reactors. Later, it was determined that of the 19,000 deaths resulting from the tsunami, only one was attributed to the radioactive fallout. Fukushima is the only outlier on this list as it is not predicated on incompetence of people or technology. It was, however, the largest scale nuclear disaster in modern times and serves as a harsh reminder of the risks. As such, this meltdown has prompted many governments across the globe to move away from nuclear energy. The fear that was built up by these catastrophes is precisely a fear of nuclear fallout. They are few and far between, but each time they occur, it seems worse. What's more is that it leads us to the assumption that it will happen again. But it's not necessarily the explosion that's so horrifying. It's the aftermath, the fallout, the radiation that leaves some of these areas uninhabitable for hundreds of years. A nuclear meltdown is the foremost existential risk with this energy source. More than any other aspect, the fear of meltdown is our new fear of the bomb. We still make electricity more or less the same way. The process focuses on various methods of boiling water to make steam, whose energy then turns a turbine. The turbine is connected to coils of copper wire that rotate between the poles of a magnet, and that creates an electric current that then travels quite a ways just so that I can play PlayStation, or so we can keep our food fresh in the fridge or watch Netflix and all the other things we take for granted. In this case, the enabling process is nuclear fission in which neutrons are shot at the nucleus of an unstable element like uranium, thorium, or plutonium. This neutron then breaks the nucleus and releases a large amount of energy, which causes the neutrons of those atoms to break off and break other nuclei. This happens again and again, thus a chain reaction. The energy created from all these subatomic particles smashing into each other boils water meaning that the thick white clouds coming from the odious looking cooling towers is in fact water vapor. And what is the horrifying part of this process? Well, it's the sheer amount of radiation that must be contained from the reaction and the fuel. The process has to be kept behind meters and meters of lead and concrete, and then the spent fuel must be contained. While the explosion is one threat, the radiation released into the surrounding environment could be a longer lasting one. Radiation is the would-be monster-making glowing green goo that turns people into superheroes or villains or makes mutants of flora and fauna alike. But it's generally more familiar and mundane. It comes in three forms, alpha and beta particles and electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves encompass the light spectrum from low energy like radio waves and TV signals that simply pass through us with no effect to infrared, which we perceive as heat, to visible light. After that are ultraviolet rays, which have enough energy to penetrate our skin and cause burns. And after this, the waves gain more energy and penetration power. This means they can remove an electron from an atom or molecule. These are forms of ionizing radiation, gamma and X-rays, high energy photons that can cause burns, radiation sickness, and can damage our genetic code potentially splitting the helixes of our DNA. Alpha and beta particles are a low energy form of ionizing radiation with low penetration power, but are dangerous if ingested. These, as well as gamma rays, are emitted from uranium. Alpha particles resemble helium atoms, while beta particles are electrons, atomic shrapnel that gets blown off of atoms. To borrow a metaphor from Chernobyl, they are like tiny bullets that, once fired, won't stop for some thousands of years. These are the result of the unstable nature of the element. It is constantly decaying toward a stable state, and as such, ridding itself of these particles in order to do so. Research done on radiation has shown many negative effects in high doses. It is hypothesized via the linear no-threshold assumption, or LNT, that the effects of radiation correlate linearly to the amount of radiation absorbed. 
the assumption being that all radiation is harmful in all quantities. That being said, radiation does come in many forms. Background radiation is all around us and varies based on our elevation, the bedrock resting beneath us, or how often we fly. The World Nuclear Association says that there are areas in China and Brazil, for example, that are naturally more radioactive than the evacuation sites in Chernobyl. We should also consider radiotherapy and chemotherapy, in which radiation is shot at very specific points in the body to slow the growth of tumors. Some scientists even believe it has beneficial effects in low doses. In any case, radiation is a fundamental part of our world. It's all around us, heating our food, helping us see, and giving us sunburns. However, the effects of radiation last far longer than our lives. So we have to make sure the waste produced is safely protected for a long time to come. Energy is an inherently dirty business. No matter the method, there's always waste. Emissions, construction, or in our case, spent fuel. It is highly volatile and needs to be contained for several lifetimes, so we need a safe method of disposal. There are two main ways that we dispose of spent fuel, recycling and direct disposal. Recycling is exactly what you might expect. It is the process by which plutonium and uranium are extracted from the spent fuel and then mixed with fresh plutonium or uranium to be used again in conventional reactors. As such, recycling ensures a smaller radioactive footprint because around 96% of spent fuel is recyclable. Direct disposal, on the other hand, takes the unusable material from the recycling process and mixes it with glass, cement, or bitumen as a stabilizer. It is then placed in protective containers and buried deep underground and sealed with rock and clay. If we consider an oil spill compared to a nuclear meltdown, we would first see that there have been far more oil spills than meltdowns. This would suggest that maybe nuclear power plants and workers are held to a higher standard. Meanwhile, waste comes from fossil fuels constantly, and there's no system of containment in place for those fumes while nuclear waste has to be treated and contained, which drives up cost but results in being more conscious as to the effects of production. Maybe the fear is not just of the waste itself, but also putting our trust in our fellow humans or corporations to be responsible enough not to cut corners, as we saw with the outdated reactor in Chernobyl. If nothing else, information about nuclear energy is nearly endless. And while we all know the theoretical basics, trying to imagine neutrons shooting at atoms in a reactor is ridiculous. That is to say, we cannot actually observe it without tools, and even then we rely on the ominous clicks of a Geiger counter. While our cultural fear may be mistrust, Fukushima has shown that we are more than capable of mitigating the dangers of radiation. Further into the future, perhaps we could even manage nuclear fusion, which would be entirely clean. The point here is to look at nuclear energy for what it is, rather than to read it with our fearful cultural understanding. There are so many perspectives out there. The important thing is to examine many, rather than subscribing to one. The nightmare of nuclear war has waned, while our fear of meltdowns and fallout have grown. But researchers at Yale have claimed nuclear power is a cleaner source of energy that can be used as a stepping stone to true green energy which becomes more pressing by the day as we deplete the resources we have and put our environment in ever-growing danger. Although nuclear energy is not a perfect solution, it may serve to give us more time to build up to more effective renewable resources. Whatever the case, we have this power. Whether you think it's Pandora's box or the future, it's not quite the monster we've made it out to be. Are we rolling? And that's nuclear! Uh, <laughs> just kidding. This topic was huge and I've barely scratched the surface. So if you wanna learn more about it, I've compiled all the research that I did and it's down in the description. So thanks for watching and really hoping to see you guys next time.